107.5 WGCI, the size number one for hip-hop and R&B. You know what it is, man. The morning show with the Destin legend, Leon Rogers, the beautiful Kendra G, myself, the shortest damn man in Chicago, Kyle. And we got some... Yes, uh, yes, you can get your laugh from me. <laughs> <laughs> we got some guests in the studio right now hanging out with us. Chicago, man, it's a pleasure. We have... We'll do ladies first. Miss Megan Good is here hanging out with us. How hello, are you? Hello, hello, hello. I'm good. I'm Meg, good. I, mean, you, right. I mean, you got to throw some more adjectives before you just say her name. There's a lot I mean, of, yeah. The beautiful. I mean, she's been acting. She's been giving us movies for her whole entire life. Facts. We watch her grow from a young girl into a woman. We love her and adore her, Megan Good. Yes, Megan. Absolutely. 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 Just can't absolutely. say Megan Good. You got to put some <laughs> sauce on that. Yeah, no question. <laughs> and Thank also, you. we have director extraordinaire hanging out with us today, Mr. Dion Taylor. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. What about my stuff? Ah! What my stuff at? Okay, well, he, he got good hair. Yeah. If you want babies with curly hair, there you have it. He also did the movie Traffic with Laz, but now he's back with something even more thrilling. That's right. The one and only, he's in the building. No question. I love it. I need to take you with me. <laughs> now, the, the movie that you guys are pushing right now is a good movie. We want everybody to go check it out. It's called The Intruder. Yeah. yeah. Right? Starring Megan Good and Michael Ely, directed by Dion Tiller. Yes. I got to tell you, man, the movie was good, but I was... Megan's character was kind of pissing that's me off. You know, it was good because pissing me off. Yeah. Man. So Kyle and I saw a, a, an early screening. Yeah. So the reason why I knew the movie was great is because I really like I love Megan in real life. Yeah. I hated her in this movie. Right. Oh good. My God. Right. Good. Good. I was so you, like, if you don't get your black girl intuition <laughs> on, girl. So Dion, tell the people, man, that are listening right now that want to go see the movie. What's the basic concept of the movie? So the concept of the movie is basically a, a couple, Michael Ely and Megan Good, they buy their dream home. And uh, the only problem is the person that they buy it from, he won't leave. <laughs> and uh, it sounds, you know, what's so funny because we, like, we laugh at it. Right. And I'm sure everyone, we've been screening a movie around the country and everyone's laughing the first 30 minutes. And then, you know, you get to Kansas City and someone is passing out. And you're like, what <laughs> yeah. happened? It's because they're screaming. And it's, uh, it's just a fun movie, man. And, um, you know, I, if you're a fan of Get Out, if you're a fan of uh, When a Stranger Calls, The Shining, yeah. Dennis Quaid is absolutely horrifying in this movie. Yeah, and uh, oh, yeah. we're and we're just excited about it, man. So we're running around promoting it, but I think it is this year's thriller. Yeah, no yeah. question. Uh, of course, Megan Good starring your husband in the movie, Michael Ely. You guys yeah, are the yeah. couple that buy the house, but he's trying to give you all the warning signs. You're not <laughs> listening, man. You're not listening, yo. That's you know that's the thing about it is like, <laughs> and I told Dion because because when we were filming the movie, I was like, man, I can't do that. I can't do that. People are gonna be like, want to strangle me? And Dion was like, no, that's the point. That's the moment where we get the audience activated, where they're like, girl, get out of there, girl, don't do right. that. And what's crazy is I've seen it now with three different um, audiences. I've seen it here in Chicago, I've seen it in St. Louis, and I've seen it in Atlanta. And that's the best part is that this movie is so interactive. Like everybody is yelling and they're vocal and everybody's like in it, you know? Yeah. So it's it's kind of amazing that his master plan worked. Um and, and I'm just really proud of it. Like I, I think it's a good it's an incredible movie going experience. It's less of a movie and more of an experience. It takes you back to the nineties. Yeah. No you know question. what I said? But and like, you know, in the beginning, like I mean, you have to give you your credit. Like I said, you are acting royalty. You really are. Thank you. And I love the <laughs> fact because not too many actresses on your level still do the travel into different mm -hmm. cities to promote the movie. Yeah, yeah. Tell us why you feel as though it's important mm. that you still do that. Um, because at the end of the day, you got to treat every job like you're just beginning. You got to be humble. You got to be appreciative. The second that you start believing your own hype is the second that you're playing yourself. And that becomes your identity. And then when that thing isn't happening, you don't know who you are. So for me, it's always about being humble. It's always about going to see the people that support me. It's always about showing up and doing the work, ultimately. Right. Mm. Yeah. Ask me it. that question. Okay. Ask me that question <laughs> while I'm doing it. Ask me why I'm doing it. Okay, why are you doing it? Because this movie is 100% independent. And yeah. black what owned. does that mean? That means that we took our own money and made this movie. Wow. 100%. Yeah. Right? And that means that we produced it and directed it by ourselves. Yeah. And we made this movie. And Megan came on board, Michael Ely, Dennis Quaid, Joseph Secor. So for the culture one time, everybody, you know, ran around saying, oh, we got to support it. This is the one you have to support. That's yeah. big. This right. is owned by us. Yeah. yeah. And Sony stepped in and did an amazing job bringing the film out to the world. But this is our movie. Yeah. And that's why we're really taking the initiative to run around and promote the film and be active. And that's why we haven't slept in two weeks and we're really out here promoting <laughs> the movie. So please, everybody out there, Chicago area, Gary, Indiana, big shout out. Y'all got to go support this film, man. Yeah. One th and not only that, it's great. Yeah. It really is good. But I will say one more thing real fast. What's that? 
This is important for Megan. Yeah. The movie is so dope because what's happening is people are getting mad at her. But <laughs> yes. what they're not but what what they're not realizing is Megan never sees that side of Charlie Peck. But his no, 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 okay, no, you never, gotta watch the movie. There was clear signs. Yeah. How you Where? Gonna, he at the house at, well, I don't wanna give the movie away. It's definitely Where worth seeing, but it? I disagree with that. Right, and I don't wanna give the movie away either, yeah. but she's being con- counseled by her husband. But also in the movie, <laughs> but also in the movie, every time they have a run in together with her husband, yeah. her husband is the aggressor. All right, well, y'all got to okay. see the movie. Okay, listen. Okay, okay, let's go. Okay, okay, let's go. Now, listen, that, that is, <laughs> no, a couple of things that he said. Okay, first of all, Joseph, Joseph Sakur is also Tommy on Power, yes. Yes. who is a friend to our Big show. Shout out to yes. And Joseph. he's from Chicago. Yes. 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 So yes. you have to go see. He does an amazing job. He's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Tommy. Now, okay, <laughs> there's two reasons why I got to go see the movie Intruder, because me and Kyle got into an argument about the scene about you and your husband when he was a little flirtatious, and I I felt you. Yes. A little. I felt he yeah. said that he wasn't No, what I said was, what I said when, was, when he put, was, I don't want to get away the movie, but he was put to the test, and in my opinion, he passed the test. I think he most men feel like test. that. Thank you. No, 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 I, no, I, I think Megan. most men Mm-mm. feel like that, because me and Michael were talking about it in the scene or whatever, and I'm like, but... That still happened. That's, like you may have passed the test, happened. but That's you, no, 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 something happened, happened. Yeah, and you happened. made her and you made her feel like something could happen because oh she God. wouldn't have got that far, Another and she wouldn't I'm even got up on y'all. No, listen, for real. And, and I'm I, 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 I want to have this debate so yeah. badly, in Chicago. So I need you to go see yes. Intruder for that part of the movie too, because I'm yeah. one thousand percent with you. He made her comfortable. He should have never. He should never made her comfortable enough Are you for her to do so. Yes, yes. And let me and let me say something else about marriage. You gotta be careful because when y'all are not together, that's how other people have the opportunity to come up in your Uh-oh. thing. Preach you it. gotta be connected. Uh, Preach it. That's let real me, life. Let me jump in right that's here. That's real life. This, this no, that, you're right. They don't care. But in terms of you making a mistake on the flip side, that's how people get in there. Michael let me, uh, did not do anything wrong in he, this movie. I, I, I disagree with that. Thank you. Thank I disagree you. with that. A thousand percent. Let me jump in right there since we're talking about but that's marriage. Good. Good. We're talking good about marriage, <laughs> and uh, we've had your husband Devon on the show yes. twice in the past year. He's been here in studio before you right yeah Uh, so you're here now so i wanted to ask you this question because i think this is very interesting you've gone from being somewhat of a hollywood sex symbol Mm -hmm. to being the pastor's first lady you know what I mean? Well, how does that affect your career? How does that affect how you deal with people? She's not a pastor. Thank you. That's not, the first he's part. He's not a pastor. Uh, my husband's not a pastor. He's a minister. And his first job is a producer. He produces films. Okay. That's what he does. Um, ministering is something that God has called him to. Uh, but for me, and people do call me first lady, the thing is, like, I got saved when I was 12. I got baptized when I was 19. So me being a sex symbol never had anything to do with me not being a Christian okay. or not believing in God. As you can see, I still dress how I dress and do whatever I feel in my spirit between me and God. But mm-hmm. Whatever I'm convicted of, that I won't do. If I feel like I'm disappointing God or disrespecting him, that will never happen. However, how I perceive the world is a little bit different than some Christians. I, I'm not a very religious person. I'm a relationship with God person. I hear from him on my own. I hear from him um, specifically. And so I grew up doing like off-Broadway shows with drag queens when I was 10 years old. Mm. So the way that I see the world as a Christian is different than how some Christians that more may, accepting maybe. maybe yeah. Oh, I, pro- I, I don't want to say that because I don't want to be judgmental, but pro- p- potentially, yes. Okay. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, it hasn't changed my career. I think it's changed some people's perceptions of me, but I'm the same person. Like I said, I, I got baptized when I was 19 on my own, and I didn't grow up in a household where people were like, you need to go to church, you need to do this, blah, blah, blah. That's just what came to me. And I researched many other religions, and this is just what God told me. This is who I'm supposed to be. Yeah. So I was already that person. So I, I haven't changed dramatically in that sense. Now, however, marriage has changed me. Okay. Marriage has helped me grow and, and has been extremely healing for me. And I wake up every day surprised at how much I like being married because I'm incredibly independent. I grew up in a household where my <laughs> father wasn't really there, so it was just a bunch of women. And I was taught very young, take care of yourself, don't need nothing from a man, don't depend on nobody. So... To be in a relationship like this where I don't have to depend on someone, but I can, is an amazing feeling. And he's definitely the best thing that's ever happened to me. And that's, that's why up. Charlie Peck 
Pink Turk. <laughs> <laughs> That's why in yes. the intruder, Charlie Pink chose Megan. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Listen, it's it's all about the movie Intruder. It comes out May third. Yes, you have yes. to go see it. But I do want to I, I want to say that for one second about your marriage, only because you know women out here, we want to know what you and Sierra did. What is the prayer that you said <laughs> to get your husband, girl? Because we want to. We love your husband. He's yeah. like one of those men that we sometimes call a unicorn. Like we don't see too many Divine Franklins in the world anymore. Mm. And you know we say that about Sierra and Russell Wilson. So was there a prayer? Because I do know, and I'm going to talk about this secondly, about celibacy, because I'm yeah. doing that. And I'm so happy I got Megan Good in the building because <laughs> she could back me. But before we get into that, was there a certain prayer that you did before you received your husband? Um, Yeah, but the prayer wasn't about a husband. A prayer was about help for me. I had just come out of a relationship that wasn't the best relationship, and I was just like, I need help. Like, I'm broken from past relationships, growing up in this business, my dad not being in the home. And I was like, Lord, what do I need from me? And so in seeking help for myself is when I got revelation about my husband. And, and I was just like, okay, so now I know that's my husband. What am I supposed to do with that? And God was like, nothing. Just spend time healing. Just focus on me. Let me be your love. And so from the time that I knew Devon was my husband to the time that he asked me out, it was nine months later. And I didn't speak to Devon pretty much the whole time. I saw him once to, like, do a testimony at his church. And I talked to him once to, like, go to a award show to, like, promote Jumping the Broom. Wait, so could you say that again? You saw him, said, that's my husband, but he didn't ask you out until nine months later? No. So I met Devon on a general meeting about six years prior. Okay. So I knew him, and we had a positive kind of, like, cool, that's great, that's the guy who gives you the job. And then we shot Jumping the Broom. While I was shooting Jumping the Broom, I was coming out of a relationship I had been in for almost four years. And I remember seeing Devon on set, like, wow, that's the kind of guy I wish I could marry. And the crazy thing is, from that relationship, there was so much brokenness that I felt like Devon was out of my league. And coming out of that, when I got home, I completely got out of the relationship. I just started praying about what I needed for me. And in that prayer time, God told me two things. One, that I needed to be celibate. And two, that Devon was my husband. So I just worked on myself for the next nine months until Devon eventually asked me out. And then from the point that he asked me out, we went out two weeks later. Ten months later, we were engaged. Two months later, we were married. It'll be seven years on June wow. 16th. Wow. And yeah. you've been celibate now, what, four years now, right? No, he's... Uh, <laughs> four days? <laughs> well, know. he's he's married. <laughs> but, but, but in the reality, though... Shut you've up. been celibate five years now, right? <laughs> Whatever. But actually, I really am celibate. We'll make celibate. a movie about it later. We'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> he, he's been, oh, oh, Master can be celibate while you're married. Is that possible? Yeah, I mean, if you don't do nothing on a... You did something on a Friday. You don't do nothing until yeah, Wednesday. You've been celibate like four days. And that's why... <laughs> and that's why Charlie Peck is celibate. I just keep coming back to the truth. No, that's not, no, I got you. I, I got you. And, and, and trust yeah. me when I tell you, I know you are here for the intruder. We are yes, all going to absolutely. see the intruder. But do you mind just talking about the celibacy thing real sure, quick? Because sure. I need a female like Megan Good to back me because I feel like Leanna Kyle give me hard times sometimes right. with my decision of really trying right. to wait until I'm married to have sex again. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So talk about, there's people that are listening to to understand why that is so important and why that can work with attracting the man like your husband. I mean, for me, it was a spiritual reason initially, but I think at the end of the day, it's incredibly practical. Bottom line is, I was in a relationship for almost four years. What I had settled for, and it wasn't that there was cheating or anything like that, but what I settled for, because I was so physically caught up in him and feeling like I needed him, and the way that I thought I knew him, that it took me four years to learn him, when Devon and I got together, I knew Devon that well in five months. Because there was not that kind of intimacy, it was intimacy of the heart, the mind, the spirit, it was... Okay, I love you. I've loved lots of people. Do I like you? Can I spend a lifetime with you? And in order for me to get that information, taking the physicality out of it, because sometimes that blurs things and sometimes it confuses you. And again, it makes you settle and all these different things. I just had complete clarity. It was like, do I like this human being? Do I want to spend a lifetime with him? Are we going to the same place? Are our purpose and destiny connected? And it was easy to clarify that just because we were here and here, you know? Um, And yeah, so I, I think it, was not only a game changer, it didn't just bless my marriage, it changed my whole career too. It changed the way that I approach things, it changed my work ethic, everything about having that type of discipline because that's the hardest place. God knows, that's the hardest thing to do. And when you can discipline yourself that way, one, I believe God honors it, and two, I think it it translates into every area of your life. 
I love it. Nice. Let me bring it back to you, Dion. Uh, you said something earlier that was kind of important, and uh, I wanted to revisit it really quick about this being a black-owned movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of uh, us that are trying to get into the business in Hollywood. There's a lot of us that are, you know, have aspirations of doing what we do. And we always hear about how black Hollywood is so much smaller than Hollywood on a whole. Black yeah. Hollywood yeah. has <clears throat> opportunities that are a yeah. little bit more limited yeah. than Hollywood as a whole. What do you say to those people that are trying to follow in your footsteps as a director and maybe you even, Megan, as an actor, you know? Yeah, I would just say um, do your own thing. I've been preaching this for a while now. Like, basically, a lot of times what we do is we we think people could hook us up into the entertainment business. You know what I mean? Like, go on, man, here go my script, get my movie made. Yeah. Like, yeah. it don't work like that. You know what I mean? It's like a long time ago, people used to walk down the street and get discovered. Right. Yeah. Right? Don't nobody get discovered no more. Same with you music. Gotta, you got to yeah. discover yourself. And what that means is build your own way. So if, you, if you're a filmmaker, if you're a writer, if you're an actor, actress, my idea is always go build your own platform. Yeah. If you're going to do it through social media, that's cool. You know what I mean? But instead of just doing jokes or holding money up to your head on Instagram, <laughs> if you're an actor, right, right. then right. go, then go do small skits. You know, one of the most popular people I like watching is, is like what Ha Ha Davis is doing right now yeah. is Goat. King Batch, you know what yeah. I mean? If you're going that way, go that way. But then outside of that, if you're a real serious filmmaker, pick your iPhone up, get your girlfriend to hold the phone for you, and go make something. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because once you begin to create content, there's so many avenues for content. The biggest thing that we export as America right now is content. Yeah. We're mm -hmm. exporting right now, what? Avengers, Endgame, Intruder, May 3rd. You know what I mean? Like we're That's what we put out. <laughs> yeah. That's that's the money for the capital, right? So at this point, it's like you need to become a content creator. There's not enough of us in there. You guys are all content creators in this room. Mm -hmm. Right now, this content will be aired and everyone will hear it for the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I could download it. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is what you have to do. So you have to think about the process and how you get into the process, not wait for somebody to you know, hook you up because ain't nobody coming to hook you up. Yeah, yeah that's a right? fact. Took and me 13 years to hook myself up. <laughs> that's <laughs> real life. <laughs> and you got to do the work. You know, it's not lightning in a bottle. And, and when it is, it doesn't last. And so the biggest thing to me is like, you know, there was times in my career where it was like, all right, so a movie's not coming to me. So I literally had no idea what a producer did. And I went out and like started raising money and get in script and find a project and a vehicle for me, something I hadn't done. And I just literally work from the ground and have learned on every single project, you know, but it's like, and most of the time you don't know what you're doing when you start, but you just have to be committed to learning, even if you're learning on the fly, because sometimes you want to learn and then you sit and then you're not doing nothing, but yeah. it's time to learn. Sometimes you just got to go for it. And at the end of the day, you just have to do the work because there's people out there who are willing to work harder than you. So you have to apply yourself to make sure you're bringing the best version of yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, well I would, yeah, I would just add one more thing that I would say that, you know, normally as African-American people, we, when we come into the business, we, we don't have anyone to usher us in, yeah. right? So we're always learning something for the first time. And that doesn't mean just entertainment. That means everything business-wise as well. We, my dad never owned a company. My dad, my mom never got a car loan. So we don't know a lot of those things or how those things work. So normally when we get into something, the first time is going to fail because you're the first time, the first person ever doing it. Mm -hmm. So what happens is once we fail once, normally as African-American people, we don't do it again. We're like, oh, I lost my money. I did this. I did that. I can't do that no more. Right. That didn't work. And then the hood mm -hmm. be like, yeah, that shit didn't work for you. Right? You know what I mean? <laughs> so now, so now, right. now right. what we have to do is you have to get past that second and third time. The idea is you're supposed to fail a whole bunch of times. To learn. So you learn. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've been doing this, man, 14 years. I had a whole bunch of people laughing at first, giggling at, you know, the second time, the third time, like, damn, that's all right. And then the fourth time, like, damn, you did that. <laughs> now all of, you know all of a sudden now we sitting here with probably the biggest thriller of the year and and I will say this Intruder is well directed from a uh, from a standpoint of Thank camera you. angles and the way things are set up I'm visually, pretty dope man. at this yeah <laughs> I'm dope at he this, is man. though I really he know. is yeah. no doubt no see I, you know I play hoop but I'm I really do this like yeah. I really yeah. shoot cameras you know what I mean yeah. and yeah. it's something I'm really proud of and you know I had to learn it yeah you know what I mean just like I got this jump shot if anybody <laughs> want it 
Yeah. Oh my goodness. And he's a comedian. <laughs> yes. Listen, we appreciate you guys Thank coming you. out. We want everybody to check out Intruder. It's going down Friday. The Intruder, May yeah. 3rd. It's going to be in the theaters. Megan Good, Deion Tiller. It's a pleasure having Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's a thriller, but ladies, you also go with your man. And y'all have the conversation after with Michael Ely. She's a trouble. Out of pocket. Out of pocket. The director's telling you he didn't do anything. No, he did. The director's a man. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. And I'm saying that not even as Annie. Megan's saying that like, nah, nah. 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 Thank y'all for coming through, man. We appreciate y'all for real. I was about to bounce too, but I was like, let me just bounce.